So I'm going to cover a bunch of different problems in this video, all around the idea of simplification, addition, and subtraction of radicals. So we've got a bit of a list here. What you're interested in might be on it. Um, just, you know, fast forward around your way until you find what you're looking for. So I'm going to start off with uh, the cubed root of 192. What is that? How do we simplify it? And anytime you're working with radicals, I want you to take this radicand. That's the piece under the radical sign. Take the radicand and start making factor trees. And just find prime numbers that go into it. I know 192 is divisible by 2. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, I think 96. 96 times 2. Yeah, that works. So 96 times 2 is 192. Divide that by 2 and we get 48. Uh, divide that by 2 and we get 24. Divide it by 2, we get 12. Divide it by 2, we get 6. Divide it by 2, and we get 3. So now I have all the prime numbers of 192. And what you're going to do is you're going to find how many groups of 3. That's not a nice enough color. Let's really make this stand out. I'm going to find how many groups of 3 I have because this is the cube root that we're looking for. So here is a group of 3, and here is a group of 3. And that's it. So each of those groups of three is going to generate one term that pops out of the radical sign. So this becomes two. That's that one. And there's another one down here. That's another two times the cube root of what's left. Three. Okay. So we have four times the cube root of three. That is a simplified radical. So let's try it again for this one. Uh, I see a shortcut here. Uh, with this guy, because I know that 216 is equal to 6 cubed. Uh, you, you should know a couple of the cubes off the top of your head. Okay, now uh, the next part is x cubed and the next part is uh, phi squared. So how many pairs do we have? Remember what the radical sign with no index here, it means an index of 2. So that means 1, 6 pops out. One pair of sixes is destroyed, and an x pops out, and a phi pops out. And what's left behind uh, is a six uh, and an x. But I think that's it. Uh, just to go over that in a little more detail. You know what? Do this over again. Um, I'm looking for the square root of six times six times six. We're going to circle the pairs here just so you can really see what's going on in case you had questions about how this simplification works. Okay, here are the pairs I'm talking about. Um, there's a pair right here. Okay, there's a pair of x's, and there's a pair of phi's. That's how I decide what pops out of a square root sign. Now, when it comes to adding radicals, treat these like variables, right? You combine like terms. So first, let's get rid of the parentheses. I'm going to say this is 2 radical 2 minus 3 minus a negative 7. So that's a positive 7. And then minus a 10 radical 2. The negative signs outside of parentheses can kind of mess with you a little bit, so watch out for those. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4, and 2 root 2 minus 10 root 2. Well, how many root 2s are there? Right? You can treat root 2 kind of like it's a variable. There's one variable. There's another of its kind. So we're going to say this is 2 minus 10. That's a total of minus 8 root 2s. Okay, so... 4 minus 8 root 2. And when you're combining radicals, remember they really have to be like terms. So if you see some radical 7s here and radical 3s there, those aren't going to work. So we just do what we can. This becomes 6 plus 4, right? I'm looking at these coefficients. That makes 10 root 7 minus uh, 8 root 3. Okay, those root 3s just don't go anywhere. Uh, likewise, if you're looking at radicands, and see, oh, they all look the same. Isn't that great? We're going to combine everything. Not so fast, because if you look closer, see what we got here. This is a cubed root right here. And the other ones are only square roots. So they're not like terms. You have to keep them apart. So we have negative root 3, or sorry, negative 3 root 7 plus 5 root 7 makes a total of 2 root 7 plus 4 cubed root 7. And that's as far as you go, because... The square root and the cube root are not like terms. Okay, so last one on the list. It might look at first like 
we don't have like terms here. Okay, 162 and 50 don't seem very similar to me, uh, but I want you to get in the habit of always simplifying down to prime numbers inside radicals if you can. See all these other ones? Root 7s, root 3s, root 2s. Those were all prime numbers, so I did not kind of delay us on that point. But for this one, we have to be careful. 162 is equal to 2 times uh, 81, I think. And 81 uh, is just 9 times 9. Okay, and it's a square root, and I have a pair of numbers right here, so I can kind of stop there. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4, and what pops out? It's the 9 that pops out. So it's 4 times 9, square root 2. And over here, that's 3. Well, what's 50? That's 2 times 25, and 25 is just 5 times 5. And look, I have a perfect square right there. So this is 3 times 5. One of those 5s pops out, and you have square root 2. And now you see the common radicand that was hiding the whole time right in front of us. So we're going to take these and kind of simplify them. We have 36 root 2 there, minus 15 root 2 over here. That makes a total of 21 root 2s. And that's how you handle simplification and addition subtraction of radicals.